Hey, welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I want to talk about BJT models. And specifically, this is how you model a BJT in a circuit so that you can determine the characteristics of that circuit. The reason that we need a model for the BJT in a circuit is given a circuit like this, which is a common emitter amplifier, when we're going to do the AC analysis, the steps in the AC analysis look like this. First, since we're only concerned with the AC part of the circuit, we short all of the DC sources. Second, assuming the capacitors have been chosen appropriately, we can assume that the capacitors have a very low reactant, so we can make all those capacitors shorts. Third, we can redraw and simplify the circuit. So what that means is based on doing these shorting the DC sources, so we shorted the DC source to ground, we shorted these capacitors, that means that this resistor and this resistor will end up in parallel, so we can do the combination of those two resistors. So going through those first three steps would give us a circuit that looks something like this. This resistor is the combination of these two resistors. The RE resistor, the resistor in the emitter, got shorted out. Here's my RC resistor and there's my output voltage. I still have this transistor in the circuit here and I can't do the analysis with a circuit like this. I need, I need to convert from the schematic symbol of this BJT into some kind of model. So the fourth step is to replace the BJT with the appropriate model and then the fifth step is to calculate all the parameters that you care about. That might be the input impedance, the output impedance, the voltage gain, current gain, anything like that. In this video I'm going to focus on this part replacing the BJT with the with an appropriate model and then we're going to look at two different models and look at the pros and cons of those two models. The first model I want to look at is the hybrid equivalent model. Okay, a hybrid equivalent model is a two port system and anytime you have a three terminal device where you, one of those terminals is going to be in common to the other two terminals you can use a two port system to model that to model that device and this two port system looks like this. So on one side I have my input so let's just call this side 1 and I've got two terminals 1A and 1B and into this terminal I have some amount of input current and between these two ports I have some kind of input voltage. Inside the port there's going to be some kind of input resistance and then a dependent voltage source. Now the parameters for the input side are H11. The dependent voltage source is going to be parameter H12 times the output voltage. So we need to know what that output voltage is and that's going to be on the other side of this two port model. On the other side of this two port model I have a couple of other ports here. I've got, I'll just label them 2A and 2B. And on these ports I am going to model this with a dependent current source that has a resistance across it. So this this resistance across it I'll call it, I'm going to call it H22 and this dependent current source is H21 times IN. So this hybrid equivalent model is a two port system consisting of four H parameters, H11, H12, H21, and H22. I'm modeling the three terminal transistor so I actually am going to have a connection here, a common connection between these two points. And, and this is a general hybrid equivalent model and what I'm trying to model of course is the BJT circuit schematic circuit symbol looking like this base collector emitter and if I'm looking at common emitter configurations that's where I can connect the, the emitter here together so 1B and 2B are both the emitter pin 2A is the collector and 1A is the base uh, a couple things I didn't mention that are important the output there it's designated V out and the input current there is I out. So the H parameters for the hybrid equivalent model are determined from measuring, measuring those characteristics on the device and they are going to be specific for an operating point. 
So this is one disadvantage of the hybrid equivalent model is these parameters are specific for the operating point that that was used for, for testing. H11 is sometimes called HIE and it is determined by applying an input voltage and measuring the input current when the output voltage is set to zero. And this is sometimes called the simply the input impedance. Parameter H12 which will you can often find in the data sheet as HRE is determined from V in over V out when I in is set to zero. And this parameter is called the voltage feedback ratio. The third H parameter is H21, which you can find in a BJT data sheet as HFE. And HFE is determined from the ratio of I out over I in when V out is equal to zero. This parameter is called the small signal current gain. And finally, the H parameter H22, you can find in a data sheet as HOE. And that's determined from the ratio of I out over V out when I in is equal to zero. And this is the output admittance. There's a lot of parameters in this model to make a, a fairly complicated circuit. And, and if you were to go back to this analysis, what you would do is plug in the hybrid model for the BJT right there. I'm doing that substitution of the BJT for the model gives me a circuit that looks like this. Here's my BJT in it with all the H parameters. And here's my input applied to the base. Here's my output from the collector, the collector resistor. The com this one's the, um, the resistors at the base. And then I've got my common emitter right here. So my analysis now to figure out the input impedance, well, I'd calculate the input impedance using all of this stuff. I would calculate output impedance using all the parameters. And then I'd calculate the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage to figure out the voltage gain. Not super difficult, but not a trivial thing to calculate either. Another model that can be used is called the RE or the T model. And one of the advantages of this model is that it is now a little bit more dependent on the operating condition of the circuit. This RE is determined from the DC bias point. So it is determined by the specific circuit. The T model takes the transistor and replaces it with a simple model that looks like this. So this is my transistor, base coming in, collector, emitter. So it consists of a resistor, which is denoted by little re, and this dependent current source, which is determined by beta times ib. ib is the current coming in here at the base. Now this is obviously much simpler than the hybrid model because I only have two things that I'm dealing with within the model. Now here's something interesting. The T model is actually a version of the hybrid model when HRE is equal to zero, so that part goes away. HOE approaches infinity, so that that's a very big resistance and we can ignore it. So RE becomes beta times HIE, and here we have a current source and a current source, dependent current sources, those are the same current sources. So this HFE term actually is the beta term in the T model. So the RE or the T model is simply a version of the hybrid model with some of the, the parameters removed to make it a little bit simpler to, to analyze. And it is simpler to analyze and it is a and it is a legitimate model to use because this HOE term typically is very big and this HRE term typically is also going to be very small, so we can ignore those. So these are two of the major models that are used for, for BJTs and in most of my videos I use the T model because it's a simpler one to use and, and typically quite and typically just about as, as uh, precise in the modeling. There are other models to use. Um, specifically, there's a hybrid Pi model, and that's a good model to use when you're doing high frequency modeling. It includes a number of different capacitances that, that uh, help in the high frequency modeling. 
but in in most of my analysis I'm, I'm assuming that we're dealing with mid frequency ranges so the T model is a completely suitable one to be using. Alright I hope you learned a little bit about modeling BJT's and circuits and I thank you for watching.